Welcome to GreyPrimer.com. My name is Nick. I'm your host. And on today's episode, we're going to look at the Haynes Model Builder's Manual, a practical introduction to building plastic model construction kits by Matt Irvine. I was quite surprised to find this in a bookshop because I, I I thought looking at it that you know it's quite old fashioned looking you know the 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 plane here and the car and stuff and I figured how could I have missed this for so long uh, it's a, you know a guide to building plastic model construction kits surely this would have come up on Amazon you know. Other people who bought this like this. Uh, but no. And the reason for that is that, as retro as it looks, this is first published in July of 2019. Uh, so it's pretty new. And that made me sort of think, okay, uh, is this response to the, the growing popularity of the likes of Games Workshop and various sort of uh, miniature heavy board games like, you know, from Come On or from uh, Fantasy Flight. Are we seeing sort of something like this from Haynes, from a previously sort of unrelated brand? Uh, I'm <sighs> Cashing in is harsh. I mean, you know, taking advantage. Is that less harsh than cashing in? Anyway, um, seeing that there's a growth in a market and stepping in and going like, hey, Let's get some of that. And let's just see. I'm flicking through it here and I'm thinking, no, this is not embracing the growth of Come On and Fantasy Flight and Games Workshop, etc. This is something else. But let's get this onto the table and have a proper sort of read through. Um, and I'll give you my opinion on whether I think it was, it was a good purchase for me. You know, everyone's different, so there might be something in here that really appeals to you. Did I need to buy it, or should I just have stuck to searching through YouTube to find all of the, the help and instruction and guides that I need? Let's just see. Back soon. Okay, so here we go with the Haynes Model Builder's Manual, a practical introduction to building plastic model construction kits by Matt Irvine, published in 2019. The images in the front, a collection or a selection of planes, trains, and automobiles. We got some stuff on a sprue, tools, and a selection of paints there. And it looks like a partially constructed kit. So we got a spaceship, I guess. And in the back, we got a little sample of what's inside a bio from Matt Irvine. Really interesting background, actually. Did a lot of stuff with children's TV in the UK. Okay, so let's have a look inside. We've got the Model Builder's Manual. We got the date it was published here. Repeat of the same image. So just gonna quickly sort of run through the sections that they cover here. We got in the beginning sort of what scale models are, how the, the kits are manufactured. The relevance of scale, the actual, uh, let me see, the range, I'm not sure what that relates to. Tools, cement, and a place to work, paint, basic building, decals, displays, and dioramas, alternative and advanced techniques, and the future, collecting versus building. And uh, we got clubs, competitions, displays, and photography, appendix, references, model companies, and then index. And of course, I wanted to look at this from the perspective of the miniatures hobby and where this would sort of fall in terms of relevance to us a lot. We may also be granted a, a bit of a window into this world of different types of miniatures and, and kits that we wouldn't really have much exposure to, or perhaps we walk past them on our way to buy basing materials in our local model shop. And I think it's it's really interesting to see sort of what's inside those kits and what people get out of them. And I can just sort of flick through a few things. So there's a bit of the in the beginnings here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Whatever that kit is. Then we look at the manufacturer of a model kit. And this is 
probably one of these early examples of where you would have maybe first started looking at model kits if you're of a certain age, you know, that would have been sort of these things in balsa wood that you would have had to put together. These little planes and things you would have popped out of like the, the balsa uh, pre-cut sheets. Um, and then there would have been like maybe die cast components here that you would have attached to it as well. Maybe there were elastic bands, wire together or tape or glue together. It seems kind of old fashioned to be thinking in those terms, but I, I guess the um, the techniques that the art is the same, you know, the, the artistry and putting it together and also the artistry and the design. And you've got your instruction manual here. It's, uh, I don't think it's changed that much. Uh, it looks like a die cast kit that you had to put together. Again, wood here with maybe some plastics. How to actually design one of these things, different types of, of mold making here. And this is probably a bit of language that I keep misusing certain words when I'm talking about the sprues, but you can actually see the correct technical terms here. You get vent chambers, sprue entry points, cavities, gates, runners, runners. That's what that's called. That, that frame thing that goes around. And then what's a gate? Okay, the gate is the, the little bit that comes across from the sprue here. Cavity, sprue entry point of these little stubs. And then a vent chamber. Okay, that's really, that's really cool. More technical terms there. And then we can see the detail of talking about a classic steel injection molding tool for a Rebel aircraft carrier. And that is a huge thing. Beryllium tool, easily identified by its gold color. This is for an Aurora dinosaur. I'll give you a little close up on those. Those are really neat. That's very interesting to see. For me, anyway. And when I was a kid, these types of shops with the, you know, the, the multiple boxes sort of stacked up, they were always so fascinating to me. I just. This is a world of wonder in these, these stacks of different types of tanks and aircraft and all sorts. I suppose it's no different now. Um, these shops still exist. There's one in Dublin called Mark's Models. And I just love it. It's just got, you know, rows and rows of these things. And then we're into scale. The different types of scale that represented in the various models. You can see here a range of Ferraris. Mostly when we talk about scale, we're talking about things like 32 mil and you know 54 mil busts and um, 28, 25, 14 mil. And I guess we're talking about the, the width of the base there. Maybe somebody can expand on that. But it seems to be consistent with the, the standard base that the, the miniature is, is on. But we talk about sort of 32 mil miniatures, 25 mil, 28. Here we're talking about scale to real life. You know, like 1 to 12 through to 1 to 72. And, you know, here's the first of our crossovers. This is pretty much what it felt like building the Orc bombers in Aeronautic Imperialis recently. Uh, you can check that video out in the... Um, Games Workshop Warhammer playlist, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was, there was a lot of bomb, a lot of DACA. And then we have the likes of some military vehicles here, some ships. The military vehicles are interesting. I mean, there, there's probably a lot of stuff in there that if you get clever about it, you could go into your local model shop, go have a look at, you know, tanks, um, armored patrol carriers. They, there are even some sci-fi kits in there, and there may be stuff that you could, if you get it close enough to sort of the scale of Warhammer or Kings of War or whatever you're working on, it wouldn't be Kings of War, what would it be Dead Zone? I guess they're more futuristic thing. But anyway, you know, there, there are definitely kits that you could um, cannibalize for parts. If you go into a model store and look at kits like these for exactly that reason. Um, and you could uh, 
kit bash your existing stuff in a really cool way. And then uh, into the more traditional sort of train sets and things. Like, incredibly popular to this day. I guess most of the stuff in here is incredibly popular, but trains always seem to be that thing that people were, like, they get into in such a deep way. You know, it wasn't like you dipped your toe into model trains. You were, became a model train enthusiast, a hobbyist. Um, I could be general. I'm generalizing there, obviously, but for me, I always looked at that as, like, a commitment, a real, like, I'm going to get into this. I suppose that's the same as the miniatures hobby in that respect. That people tend to, you know, maybe you dip your toe that first couple of months or weeks, and then all of a sudden you're trapped under plastic. You know. <laughs> also, we got uh, what you get within each range. Some really nice aircraft. Some sci-fi kits there. There's a lot of reading here. There's, there's, you know, going into the different U.S. kits and everything. And probably this is up to jump into chapter five here. I mean, there's a lot of things to go through up to this point. But now we're into the first of our real serious crossovers. Tools, cement, and a place to work. This is right in our wheelhouse now. Like illuminated magnifiers. Um, cutting mats display areas for tools, you know, storage, paintbrush pots, and the types of tools that you can use here. Now this is really resonating. I mean, I can probably look at this and, and spot five or six things that I own. Easy. So probably the same brand as well as probably exactly the same zero and cutters that I have. Practical sort of how to get them off the sprue. You could use of saws here and clippers. I'm not sure what this tool is. Oh, it's a razor saw as well. Okay. And then we get into filing and sanding. Looks like a full on sander. It's like a belt sander. Wow, that's hardcore. Uh, different types of grips, clamps, and things there. <laughs> Clothes pegs. Yeah, really neat, you know, and, and actually how to do the clamping, how to use sandpaper, the different grays and things, vices, tape, drills, sticking stuff together, drilling and pinning using a multi-tool. We had all of our different um, chemistry here with, you know, fillers and glues and pretty much everything that we have in our world is here. I'll just bring it up a bit closer. So yeah, again, there's probably 10 things in that image that I own. And that is a serious crossover. You got the multi-tool there. I'll just go back actually to that um, image with the tools to see if a better view of it. Yeah. So a lot of that will be very familiar to you guys. Now we're talking about the different types of cement here with super glue and liquid cement and tube cement and uh, detailed instructions on those and guidance. Really great stuff, actually, that using glue guns. I think this is brilliant. I think this is really practical, solid advice. And then we get into the bits and pieces box um, or boxes. Yeah, I don't know how many of those I've got, maybe a dozen now. Like these little drawers you could buy for, you know, for nuts and bolts, but you could retask it to being parts of miniatures. And we have the workshop cat over there. And now we're into paint. So very much remaining within our wheelhouse here. And we'll see what they've got on show here. I guess Humbral enamels, Tamiya acrylics. And then I'm not sure about the rest of these ones but very similar and then some more of the tamiya sprays and things there revel sprays which are really good uh, in a well ventilated environment and then lots of instructions and got a bit on airbrushing there um like setting your pressure the types of paints for airbrushing spray booths and practical things like primers and you know, cleaning miniatures and stuff, or uh, masking tapes and 
all that fantastic stuff. Um, so this is really great. Goes into great depth and everything. The different types of finishes, how to use the different types of masks. We've got some weathering techniques here. Dry brushing, adding dirt. Um, and then we are, we're actually into building. It's weird that they have painting before building, but I don't care. It's all, it's all solid, solid advice. Uh, they touch upon the building sort of techniques back in the, when they were looking at tools, but this goes into much more detail by the looks of things here. Decals, windows. I mean, I'm flying through this because this is, this is great content. This is something you'd want to get in front of you yourself and get stuck into it. I think there's, there's some great reading in there. And already for me, it's well worth the price of admission. There's uh, certainly enough in those last couple of chapters on painting and building. And now uh, we're into decals, which is one area that terrifies me. But uh, it, it's just, I think the thought of putting a, getting a fully painted miniature that's done and then wrecking it by putting a decal on the wrong way. I think that's what frightens me. But, but the application of proper technique and practice that's really what it comes down to. And uh, practice, practice, practice with this stuff. And I've probably got enough decal sheets knocking around here to, and certainly enough waste plastic to give it a go, to, to try it out on something that's not important to me. Um, much like painting, you know, getting, practicing your painting techniques on miniatures that are, you know, sort of throwaway almost. And can can really help you to learn advanced techniques like wet blending or or weathering something like that and similarly decals so really happy to see this though because it's it's good to have it all in one place and then we it goes through decal softener layering decals silvering whatever that is how to avoid it recovery oh that's what i need to know about recovery um, yellowing, cracking, remaking. I mean, this is gold. This is really gold. Dry type, rub down decals, peel off, stick on decals. Um, dealing with shine, make your own, how to make your own decals. Um, and there's, there's various kits and sort of, um, techniques for doing that. So that might be something you want to dig into. And then we get into displays and dioramas, which is something that I've seen in some incredible dioramas out there, some incredible sort of set pieces that people are able to achieve. Um, you can see some sort of more basic examples here and then a, quite a complex one down here with the, the Batmobile, the old uh, Adam West, I guess, Batmobile. And for people who are in that side of um, model making and miniatures where they want to create this little scene, and you see a lot of them in competitions like Crystal Brush or Golden Demon, where it's this, this incredible sort of narrative um, in this diorama, and I think those are amazing. You know, it's a different level, but some really practical stuff here, and, and um, the materials and things you can you can purchase, and how to work with them, and, and the different techniques and stuff. This is cool with the snow effect. It's really simple, but it's it's effective. And those techniques that you pick up while you are working on dioramas you can really pull those across into larger scale sets like this. I mean, this is like a railway, multi-level sort of railway thing. It almost looks like Monaco. But all of that stuff, all of those um, skills and techniques carry across, which is cool. And a much more local level, you'd be able to create even sort of like small base, like 28 mil, 32 mil round bases. You can apply those techniques across to that as well. So it's something worth looking at, something worth looking at the um, the impact that a good quality, well-designed base can have. Some sci-fi stuff. Alternative and advanced techniques in the future. Uh, vacuum forming and home vacuum forming. Oh, wow. Uh, using resins. That was really cool. Oops. Even something like gluing resin, something as straightforward as that, that can add a bit of frustration because you wonder why your plastic cement suddenly isn't working anymore. It's because you're not dealing with plastic that melts with plastic cement. But 
here's the instructions about that slush molding. I don't know what that is. White metal, limited run, photo etch, uh, blow molding. There's lots of stuff here. There's a lot of terms that we touch upon in our hobby. There's a lot of things we hear about. We've got a great 3D printer here. And it's just great having a practical guide like this to go through it. Um, you've got different types of printers here. The rolls of filaments, I guess, up there. And then the different types of things that can be printed. And then this is a incredibly relevant chapter, collecting versus building. Um, and the many, many shelves of shame over there. And I think we all know all about that. And here we go, I guess, sort of, these are, these are more sort of collector's items, talking about the, the value there. And I guess there'd be collector's items across all of these hobbies. There'd be sort of value in unboxed rare kits. Uh, sorry, unopened rare kits. And you, you mean, I don't even know what a unopened copy of Hero Quest would go for, but I know what I'd be willing to pay for an unopened box of Blood Bowl. Um, the second edition, I'd probably pay quite a lot for that. I've certainly paid enough for unboxed versions of it, actually opened versions of it, but mint in box with original cellophane? <laughs> I'd probably be pretty happy to see that. Anyway, up to chapter 12 here, we've got clubs, competitions, displays, and photography. And that's, oh, cool. Like, these are so practical. You know, how to, how to pack with packing peanuts, trans safe transportation, the different techniques, I really like this stuff. Um, display cabinets. Uh, how to photograph your miniatures. Oh, that's amazing. Going digital. Is that going digital versus film? It is. Putting aside the arguments for for and against film versus digital, a complete subject in its own right, it's an argument from the late 90s, early 2000s, it's, <laughs> there's 20 years on that argument. I, th I think it's it's been decided that probably most people would be photographing their miniatures and models with their phones. But yeah, that's um, just, just a funny little thing at the end there. It just feels a bit out of, you know, <laughs> like a snippet from a photography book from the early 2000s, late 90s. Interesting. So uh, references and model companies, and then we've got contact details and websites for each of these companies listed here. So like Bandai, Airfix, they're really famous brands. And it's broken down into things like specialist uh, companies, 3D printing, general supplies, useful sites, distributors. There's quite a lot in there. And then a full index. And you know something? Most of that's awesome. Most of that's really good quality, practical advice. I think that it's a big surprise for me. I thought that it was just gonna feel like, you know, opening the archives of the past and you know, sort of blowing the dust off, but it's not. It's current. The techniques, the materials, the, um, the relevance to the part of the hobby that I'm into, uh, for sure, there, there are probably chapters that I wouldn't spend a huge amount of time looking at. There are areas that are much more to do with boats and planes and cars that right now, that's not my thing. Maybe it's going to be my thing in the future. The actual design of the book is, I think it, the, one of its strongest parts is that it demystifies techniques demystifies the materials needed to achieve the techniques, like putting on decals or weathering or airbrushing, dry brushing, um, safety things. And I think that that's really a great achievement to put that all into one book, to make it feel like you're coming out the other side, like able to talk about dry brushing, able to sort of say, yeah, I don't think weathering's for me, but yeah. <laughs> The only negatives I would say about this book, really, the photography inside is is not exceptional. 
it's okay, it's passable, it's it's functional, but it's not a book that you would sort of open up and be like wowed uh, by the quality of the images. Some of them are a little dark. The the front of it is is not the most inspiring sort of thing. That the back is incredibly text heavy and tiny text as well. But yeah, apart from product images, you know, some of the photography just is, is a bit lackluster, um, a bit sort of grim and grotty. So two things really. The, the one small thing is that the photography advice at the end is dated and it just kind of feels like two decades out of time. Uh, you could have got uh, an update in there for something that was only published last year. You could have had something about mobile phones in there, filters, Instagram. And if the author isn't fully up to speed on on the different apps and techniques that you can, you know, the t techniques and technology that's available now, they could have collaborated. I'm sure somebody would have been jumping at the opportunity to um, contribute to a book like this. That's just one small thing that could do with an update if this goes to second edition. Um, the more major thing really relates to photography as well. The photography inside is some of it's very dull and uninspiring and dated. And it would be nice to see that updated and refreshed and brightened and sharpened uh, just to, to make it more eye-catching. It can just be, as you sort of flick through there, it's, it's sort of hit and miss. Really, that's just an aesthetic thing. The actual text, the images showing things like tooling and the paints and techniques and stuff are really amazing. For me, I, I kind of view this as an essential purchase. And I guess that comes down to like, the question I ask myself is, is this information that I could just go and get in Google or YouTube? For sure. Of course you could just go and get this at Google and YouTube. And for me, trying out a technique like adding decals to a miniature, I'd much rather have this open in front of me on, on in my workspace. And the miniatures off to one side of the book and my little tub of water, whatever, that, whatever I need. See, I don't even know, I don't even know what to use. I haven't read the manual yet but I will, and I think that's the beauty of it. I could have this sitting open in front of me, try out the techniques, you know, tick the box once it's done, but everything is right there. It's not like playing a YouTube video, pausing it, going back 30 seconds or whatever, and playing that bit again. It's all right here in the book in front of me, and I think it's very neat. Highly recommended, very enjoyable, uh, and some really practical advice in there. Absolutely love that. Um, and I hope they bring out a second edition with updated photography and updated photography advice. All right, so that's the Haynes Model Builders Manual. All done and dusted. Great stuff. And please like, subscribe, share, comment below. Check out the Instagram, which is Grey Primer Social. Don't forget to check out Mighty Lancer Games. There's a referral link in the notes below. Mighty Lancer have continued to ship throughout the entire COVID crisis. They've been doing a phenomenal job over there in, at Bridlington in East Yorkshire. It's amazing to have people like that out there who are just dedicated to continuing to support the hobby as long as they possibly can while remaining safe. And uh, just, yeah, big shout out to them. Phenomenal work. But hey, what's coming up next on Grey Primer? I hear someone out there ask. And... I don't know why I do this to myself, but it's another four day Warhammer weekend. We did the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, did what was the, the second one? Was I think Blood Bowl, Aeronautica, Kill Team, and Warcry. And there were a few people out there looking for more 40k. So, next episodes of Grey Primer. Oh, it's four days of 40k. Friday through to Monday. We got Sector Mechanicus, we got Blood Angels, we got Craft Worlds, we got Gene Stealer Cult, probably a few surprises in there as well. But it is 41st Millennium all the way from Friday through Monday. But that is coming up next episode, next four episodes, starting next Friday. Same time, same place. Till then, be safe, take care of yourselves and those around you, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.